Hello and welcome to Retro Game Connect. I'm Dan Mastrani. And I'm Ian Butterfield. And Ian, what would you say the best use of giant robots is? Uh, transforming into trucks. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, personally, I think it's making them fight. And mm -hmm. Capcom agrees with me, which is why they made the game we're playing today. Cyberbots, Full Metal Madness for Sega Saturn. Totally not Transformers. No, no, they don't transform. Well, actually, there is one that transforms. But mostly, they I'm don't. sorry, but that one vaguely looks like it would be a transformer. It's not. No, there is the one. Very basic color palette. Yeah. Very blocky. Like you add two tires to it, and it, it would be a transformer. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. That, no, it's not actually transforming though. There's, there's, oh, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if you take like, you know, the two car elements. I off hear the what you're saying. Like the design cues. Or yeah. Something. It's it's like the transformers before they come to Earth and turn into cars? Mm, yeah. Well, those are Japanese toys, so I can see like have coming, them coming from the same design tradition. Oh, absolutely. So that's probably... But like, if you play the, um, the War for Cybertron games especially, like they'll still turn into vehicles, mm. but they're the space versions, yeah. so they're like hover cars. They actually did that in the cartoon, too. Like they're, Sometimes when they'd have like flashbacks to Cybertron, you'd see these sci-fi vehicles that they changed into. Yeah. yeah. They basically got downgraded when they came to Earth. Well, they, you know, they're in disguise. Well, yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But still, they had to get nerfed. Mm. Anyhow, uh, this game is actually a follow-up to a side-scrolling beat-em-up called Armored Warriors. Mm. Uh, basically, they had, you know, these various uh, robot designs in Armored Warriors, and uh, they decided to bring them forward into a fighting game. So, uh, interestingly enough, this game actually adds a voiced story mode. Uh, there's like uh, there are story sequences in the arcade, but they're not fully voiced. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there's any voices in the ending or what. I I played the arcade game like once years ago. Uh, I tried looking at like footage of it on YouTube, and you know I didn't really have time to like watch a whole playthrough. But the parts I saw like they had dial they had like the text dialogue, but no voice. But uh, hmm. when I, I was playing this at home, you know just. First off, to test it out, and then to unlock characters, I was like, "Oh, this is this is fully voiced. Hmm. Like all the dialogue is voiced, and there actually are some uh, famous voices in it." Really? Like I was playing the game, and uh, you know, the main character Jin Saotome comes up, and I'm hearing him talking. Like, is that Toro Furia? And I looked it up, and yes, it is. So it's got him, who was uh, famous for being Amuro and Gundam. But he's also uh, Pegasus Seiya from Saint Seiya. He's Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon. And a character that you would know, Yamcha from Dragon Ball. Ha! <laughs> yes. And speaking of Dragon Ball, it also has Rogue Horikawa, who plays Vegeta. Ah. Although he also has a Gundam connection in that he played uh, in one of the... He was in the, one of the, like, the straight-to-video movies, uh, Gundam 0083. He's uh, Ko Araki. Uh, he worked with Toro Furia previously because he was... Uh, uh, and drop it a shun in Saint Seiya. Uh, some other stuff that I just I don't know off the top of my head. But you know, he's been around, he's in it. Uh the actress that played uh uh Luna and Sailor Moon is in it, uh, mm. which is the black cat. There's uh there's lots lots of well known voices in this and, and of course people who have worked in giant robot shows, so that's yeah. that's fun that I, they actually got these people. I always feel so awkward with the Dragon Ball stuff because like I I can't watch the subs. Mm. Well, not if not everybody can like you know read well, and watch. Well, it's not time. even that. It's I grew up watching the dubs. Yeah, those voices are their voices to me. I know. I, I understand. so hearing Goku speak completely differently than his like goofy American yeah. voice. Yeah, it's weird. There are there are there are different really different takes too. Yeah, uh, like, I mean for me I actually when. I was watching it when it first aired, like in syndication. So there was a period, uh, like in the middle of the Freezer saga, where uh, they gave up on syndication and it kind of seemed like the show was never coming back. So I ended up watching a lot of the subtitles and I got used to the subtitle voices. Ah. Because see, I, I thought that like was the only way I was going to be able to see it. Was I have seen some sub of like Frieza talking. I feel like of all the voices, Frieza is the one that's closest to hmm. his Japanese voice. Because it's still that very high-pitched voice. Yeah. 
But at the same time, the way Frieza talks in the American one is just so iconic. And the fact that the voice actor for Goku goes from, oh, I'm Goku, uh, goofy, goofy, Super Saiyan. All right, we're going to kick some butt. I'm like, oh, that's actually some good character work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they also definitely did. I mean, the reason that Goku has the high-pitched voice is because they decided to stick with the same actor, or the same, the same actress that they had with Dragon Ball. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And part of that is like, okay, you know, he's this like innocent, uh, naive character, so it kind of represents that he's oh, stayed absolutely. That way. It just, you know, those voices stick with you. So you try to watch a sub, and it's just like, because like I tried to watch a sub of Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. Because it hadn't been dubbed yet. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta wait till this is dubbed. Yeah. I mean, I kind of had the reverse uh, uh, thing, and like. Uh, you know, I've been playing King of Fighters games for years, and King of Fighters uh, came out, uh, I think it was Maximum Impact when they renamed it King of Fighters 2006 on PS2, and they dubbed it, and they didn't include the Japanese voices. So after years of playing the game, like, you know, they never bothered dubbing fighting games mm -hmm. in the old days, so they always just kept the Japanese voices. And then, like now everybody's talking in English, and they all sound different, completely different. Yeah. It's like, this is weird. Yeah. So it's the same thing, but kind of from a different angle. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you get you get used to watching it in a certain way. So that's no, I definitely especially when it's like watched it as a kid, now watching it as adult. So it's it's that nostalgic connection too, you know. Yeah. So it's weird, but anyhow, um, so we are people <laughs> will notice that we are yes playing the Japanese version. Uh, there is no American release for the console versions. Ooh. Uh, so the arcade version did get an English translation. I don't think it did well. I couldn't find any like numbers or anything, but several uh, sources I was looking at mentioned it doing poorly in the arcade. <laughs> Apparently Japan loved it, but America not so much. Hmm. Though it may also have just not been distributed very widely. It's hard to tell. Obviously it was only distributed as well as Polybius. <laughs> yeah, well not quite that bad. <laughs> We're not going to get into the legend of Polybius. We know this actually exists. Or does it? Yeah. But uh, though I will mention uh, before someone decides to correct us, yes, uh, the PS1 version is available on PlayStation Network. Uh, for the PS1 version, you can uh, you can download it as a PS1 classic, but that is the Japanese release. They did not translate it in any way. Hmm. But it's a fighting game, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not too much you have to read. All the important stuff is in English. Uh, yeah, anyhow... I check. Wasn't it Polybius, like... Someone did eventually make a game called Polybius Multiple after times, the legend actually, of yeah. Polybius happened. There are a couple different ones. Uh, I think most recently Jeff Minter, who was uh, famous for doing Tempest, yeah, uh, did a Polybius. So, it, it, if you want an interesting read, look up Polybius. Yeah, that's a Poly P O L Y B I U S. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. But uh, the sad version, I do not have it. But there was a limited edition. Uh, that included an art book and a couple other extra. Fancy. Yes. And lastly, uh, I will mention that the Saturn version supports a one meg RAM card. I think I've mentioned before, probably when we were playing the Versus games, uh, there were a couple of RAM expansion cards available for the Saturn. Hmm. Uh, first off, there was a one meg card, which I think is mainly used by SNK games, or at least stuff ported from Neo Geo. And later on, uh, they came out with the four meg card, which I think think was only used by Capcom, but I, I don't know for sure. But uh, basically, thanks to the 1 meg RAM cart, you know, you can get more, uh, they could load more animation. Uh, so with the 1 meg RAM cart, you still get some load time, but it does, like, improve the amount of stuff that you can have Groovy. in the game. It's not as, not as nice as the 4 meg cart. I mean, we've seen, like, some of those ports before because we played them on the show where like, they basically, like, eliminate all the loading and have all the animation from the arcade game, and it's, like, super slick and amazing. Hmm. And it makes the PlayStation versions look like crap. <laughs> I, I guess, like, if you played X-Men versus Street Fighter or, you know, any of the versus games on PlayStation, I'm sorry. I'm right. sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> but anyhow, right now we're going to... We're going to smash some robots, so uh, Woo. let's uh, go ahead and do that. There we go. 
Uh, we got the fun Capcom logo. Captain Communications. Yes. Well, they did have Captain Commando. Hmm. Who is, of course, name came from Capcom. You got the intro, which uses a little bit of uh, pre-rendered footage. Shows off your various characters. Here's the main character, Jin. He was, uh, they recast him for Marvel vs. Capcom when they made him his own character. But, uh, or where they made him a playable character as himself rather than like a, you know, piling the robot. But in here is, he is by the, uh, famous Toru Furia. I don't know if you want to jump in, uh, quick. I would like to do the arcade mode just quickly. I will have you, uh, go ahead and jump in because you'll probably lose faster. You can go ahead and pick whoever you like. So I don't know the controls. So it's a standard Street Fighter, actually. Yeah, because that actually okay. means something to me. So basically, the pilots determine the story, but uh, these three on the bottom are boss characters. They will always be the same robot, but for all these characters, you can pick. You pick the character, and they determine your story, and then you pick whatever robot you want. Okay. So it's not like Street Fighter, where say you pick Guile. And then you get Guile's story, and you're playing as Guile. Here, you're, you pick your character, and you're playing as that character, and you get that character's story. But you can, like, switch robot anytime you continue. Yeah, and these are, these are the boss characters that I've unlocked by being in the game with them. There is one more Super Seeker character, but I was not able to unlock it. Because, uh, you know, you're going to play the Super 8. Super 8's fun. The, uh, for the super secret character, which is basically giant robot Akuma, you have to either beat the game on default difficulty without losing a match, or beat arcade mode 99 times. So I wasn't Gross. able to, yeah, the, the, the first one was I just didn't have the skills, and for the second one, I didn't have the time. I've got some moves for you if you'd like to take a look. This all means nothing to me. Okay, well, I'll try it. <laughs> uh, you know I don't read Japanese, right? Okay, but those are just the motions you can make, so... Yeah. You'd have to try them out to see what they do anyway. Yeah, I don't know what they mean. I'm just saying those... Like, what the heck? So at least you know what the moves are. A2, does that mean hit oh, A twice? I I'm sorry. So attack one, attack two. Uh, both C and the right trigger are boost. So you can use whichever one is more convenient, and the left trigger is your weapons. Uh, it's 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 a it's a weapon attack. You've got uh, the weapons are governed by a meter, so you can't uh, use them constantly. It's usually like some kind of like attack or something. So you see, he's got the arm meter, which uh, you you uh, knock that all the way down. He'll your opponent will uh, lose a limb and not be able to use some special moves. And that weapon meter, uh, the one next to the W, is, it governs how often they can fire their weaponry, which is usually like a, a missile or something. Okay. So it's simple like that. And of course, you know, down to duck, up to jump, back to block. Uh, using, so you filled up your power meter. Oh, nice, knocked off, knocked off her arm. Yeah, there you go. I had, had ridiculously long arms. You teased her. Good work. Yeah. So S rank. She literally just kept walking into the arms. Yeah. They will do that for the first few matches, but after that, uh, you, you have to be a little... Uh... I'll say, when uh, you fill up your super meter, uh, every character... Oh, the whole reason I wanted to do arcade mode is to see the voice death. Voice oh. But... Uh, when you fill up your super meter for every single character, uh, the super move is uh, uh, basically the fireball motion. You know the fireball motion down to forward. Quarter circle yes. punch. So double quarter circle, then either attack Ugh. button. Double quarter circle? So you do the motion twice, then you press the attack button. Ah. As you finish the motion the second time. Uh, alternately, you've got like a basically a get off me move. If you... Uh, if your meter is full, you can use it for a uh, move that, like an invisible move that you can use to get people off you. 
by pressing both attack buttons together. But that does not use a lot of damage, so it's really only good if you're, uh... Oh. Dang. Yeah. I don't know what I did there. That was a throw. That oh. was your throw. I don't know how I did that. You just, uh, walk toward the mid, you know, press, like, toward the back when you're really close. And one of the attack buttons. It's standard Street Fighter 2 style throws. Which I know doesn't mean anything to you, but uh, <laughs> just for the benefit of our audience, I'm saying that it's a standard Street Fighter 2 style throw. So, like, now you would be able to do a super move, or you'd be able to back him, uh, or if the character was getting too close, you'd be able to back him up by hitting A and B together. But again, that's not very damaging, so. Yeah, so that was the get off me move. It's not very damaging, but it's fast and vulnerable, so you can use it to uh, back off your opponent if they're, like, really getting in your face. Yeah, if you hit the uh, the boost and the attack button, you'll do like a running attack immediately. So that's mm -hmm. a useful technique. Uh, you can use the boost, uh, depending on what on what robot you're using, you can use the boost in the air to do like a double jump or possibly to hover. And of course, normally it's just like, it'll let you run, basically. Because mm -hmm. you can see, this is fully voiced and everything, so that's, that's neat. So this is this is the character that normally uses the octopus robot, whose name is Devlot to Death Satan, which I think is amazing. And she is yet another uh, reference to uh, the uh, Duranjo gang from. Uh, I think uh, they were the villains in Yatterman. They're very, they're very well known in Japan, and uh, so you, you you get these like you know three person teams with the with the woman leading them, and it's often a reference back to that. Ah, uh -huh. uh, they they did this, this similar thing in uh, in Gunbird Two. If people have watched our Gunbird Two episode, oh, so there you get the rose in. I don't know if. Uh, as a boss character, you have unlimited weapon attacks. I don't believe uh, your robot uh, can get its arms ripped off, so you don't have to worry about that. I will mention there is one other universal move. It's kind of like a reverse uh, fireball motion. Is so you do forward to down. And then when the attack buttons, when you're up close, and you will attempt to rip off the opponent's arm. You're doing pretty well. And lastly, you can press both attack buttons together. You can hold them down to charge your meter, but of course that makes you vulnerable. So you have to be careful. So kind of like a lot like charging in a Dragon Ball game. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a reference that would make the most sense to you. So we'll see how we're going. Oh, actually, okay. It was the computer one that uh, won the last match. So if you lose this, don't worry about continuing. We will go to we'll go to versus mode. We've checked out a little of the voice dialogue, so we've given people a idea of what it's like. And we can go ahead and go to yeah, because uh, I still don't even mode. know what I'm doing, so. You can uh, you can uh, mash the attack buttons to make it go a little faster. Yeah. Game over. Yeah, it's, you know you can see a little bit of loading, but it's not too bad. So I know like two moves. Oh, there you go. Yeah, like I said, you've got two regular attacks. The boost is again is just you know makes you move forward quickly. Yeah. See, my brain doesn't think. Let's go hit another button for that. I just double. Yeah. Double tap. I think you can you can double tap yeah, as well. Yeah. I do that. But uh, in the air, you want to use the, the boost button because you can't use the double tap in the air. Hmm. It's also useful for, again, if you want to do the uh, running attack immediately, you press the, you know, like, you can press the trigger with one of the attack buttons. Uh, 
again, I, these characters honestly don't really matter for versus mode, but I'll go ahead and use main character. Keen. So, do you still get to? Okay, you still get to select your character. And whoa, what? I didn't think I unlocked him. How'd that happen? Mm. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, I will use one of his canon characters. Uh, this is the character he plays. He, he uses by default in uh, arcade mode. Yeah, you do have to press again to select. I'm. Uh, I'm not sure how that happened. Mm. I'm not complaining. Get to show off the show off the super secret character. Zet Goki, which I guess would be Ziakuma in the U.S., except that uh, he is home version exclusive, and that didn't come out in the U.S., so he was never renamed. Don't ask me why they renamed him from one Japanese word to another. Yeah, so your character is uh, is your basic uh, fireball uppercut character. I uh, actually haven't been playing as Bloody yet, so I don't know what his moves are. So as you can see, I hit the boost button in the air, and I got a got a nice double jump there. Let's see what my weapon attack is. Okay. Okay, so I've got an uppercut type attack. Do I have a fireball? Oh. I do. Yeah, yeah. No, you clearly do. So you got... It doesn't a always fire, but... Yeah. You Looks like you've got unlimited use of your weapons since you've got a boss character. Yeah, but I don't have any weapons. All right. How do you fire the super? It is uh, that yeah the fireball motion that you're doing twice. Oh, well I'm already out of energy anyway. Yeah. Oh, looks like mine was a nice auto combo, except that I knocked you out with the first attack. Uh, that's okay. Oh, okay, looks like I had a, had a grab move. Uh, you do have, uh, you may have noticed while you were down and facing the computer, some attacks will hit a downed opponent, but not just anything. Though, interestingly enough, if you're close enough, you can uh, hit your, you can throw the opponent on the ground. Though it's hard to get up, hard to get off because you have to be close. The computer does it to me all the time, but I can't figure out how to do it myself with any regularity. I keep wanting to throw a fireball with the move, but uh, for me, that's a close range attack. Yeah, see, I managed to do the quarter circle too fast for it to figure out that I'm doing it. Mm. It takes a little while. One of these days when I can actually, you know, pack an arcade stick, I, we ought to see if that... Uh... Oh, nice. Those are voice, too. Uh, one of these days when I can pack an arcade stick, we should see if that helps you at all. Mm. Because I know, like, I was, when I first got Street Fighter uh, on Super Nintendo, I was never able to, uh, we haven't seen these characters yet, I was never able to uh... Oh, are you using the last boss character? That's fine. Uh, I use another one of the regular characters. I was never able to do special moves, though, uh, on the pad. I didn't learn it until I uh, got an arcade stick. Um. Is this, uh, we have a random here? Doomsday weapon sounds fun. Yeah, sure. You can do that. Yeah, the uh, backgrounds are pretty well animated. So that's cool. I mean, load time is a drag, but I'm sure it's probably better than it would be on the on the PlayStation. Saturn's usually faster loading. 
That's one thing I had going for it. Okay, interesting. All right, so I have a projectile there. Hmm. Get over here! Yeah, I got some, uh... I got some rolling bombs. I shouldn't be giving you tips because it's gonna it's uh, gonna work against me. But yeah, uh, sure. Like I'll actually know what I'm doing. Uh, he's got a really annoying. Uh, I think his jumping weapon attack, if that's what the computer is doing to me, is really annoying. Doesn't do anything. No, it's not that one. Okay. I haven't had a chance to uh, to uh, play warlock myself, so I don't know where the attack is. But he's got an attack where he. Uh, he drops a weapon that's kind of keeps ex that it has multiple explosions, so you mm -hmm. can use it to to uh, lock your opponent down. It's really annoying. Like that. That one. Yes, <laughs> it's that move. It's the worst. It's uh. Yeah. So as you can see, I can throw you again while you're down. Up, down, attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, the computer was doing it to me all the time, and it was awful. Ooh, ooh, oh, hold on. I'm just trying to pull off a superhero. Okay. That's also really annoying. I bet that would have been something if you actually were standing next to me. Yes. Oh, you just totally st stuffed my super. Oh, actually, I forgot, so... You actually have a different, uh, different jumping attack if you hold down and hit the B button. I just instant transmissioned out of there. You did, yeah. The warlock can apparently teleport, though I don't know if it's actually having a teleport move. I've never seen the computer computer do it. I know the uh, uh, Gates has a... Uh, has a teleport... Oh, I could be in trouble if you get your super move off. Because I am right in your face right now. Yeah, during that flashing period you get uh, you get some more damage, but you can uh, you can do the move as long as uh, it, it takes some practice. Do the, yeah. It takes some practice. I was doing it. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't doing it. Yeah, this uh, this is another uh, this actor uh, uh, what's his real name? But he, uh, he was uh, uh, Ranma and Ranma one and a half. He was uh, Inuyasha in Inuyasha. Uh, Sai Sai Shi in uh, G Gundam. Uh, I'll play, uh, play this guy. This is the guy that played by, played by the same actor as Vegeta. And uh, yeah, look at that. He's right there. I'll go ahead and use the character he normally gets. The they did the LNR wrong. Fun. I don't know if you noticed that you were the Talantula instead of Tarantula. Oh, I wasn't looking. Uh, Space Fleet, why not? I think this is a decent stage. Yeah, I actually had a lot of trouble with uh, arcade mode with this guy. But if I can win, we'll, we'll get to hear Vegeta's Japanese voice. Though he, it, that voice is a little different than, uh, than the way he's playing the character. Fun. It pays to have vocal range. The claw. Shit. Yes, this guy's got an interesting attack. Because his fireball is slow, but it'll uh, it'll stun your opponent, so you can get an extra attack in. Oh, nice! You got me. Rush me down. But you can see they they reverse the Elnar. It's Talantura, 
Just have a tarantula. Let's see if I can get another throw in. Yes. My leg. Oh no. Oh boy, you're rushing me down with this guy. There's no Russian collusion. Yeah. Oof. I was a little worried I'd get, I'd, uh, get stuff there. The supers in this game don't seem to be... Uh, okay, I'm going to try this. Okay. Oh, it was a grab. I went back and blocked. Thinking like, oh, I'm going to block this. I'm like, no, I'm not. It's a throw. Yes, uh, no, being very aggressive is working for you. Yeah, it's okay, it's a close match. I'm literally just pressing like the same buttons. Yeah, well. Just that, uh, it definitely can put a lot of attacks out. So there you go. He, he goes, he goes uh, a little lower for Vegeta, but... Uh, I don't know that that's the actor. Japanese voice. So. I don't. I'm, that was him. I just know him talking like this. Yes. Or he's played by the same actor as Piccolo. Yes, but he goes much deeper and less angry. Yeah. Let's see. Who haven't we used it all yet? Uh, yeah, I guess I could play the Hellion. I was actually playing as that last, so I actually have some idea what his moves are. Uh, we saw underwater. Power station, colonial sure. satellite. I'm gonna try the power station. Hmm. Wish I had a random. That was convenient, but uh, it doesn't seem to. So we have to remember to change the stage so we don't fight at the same stage every time. At least it's labeled in English, unlike uh, when we were playing the Super Butoden games and we couldn't figure out how to change the stage. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got it eventually, but it was uh, it was inconvenient enough. So this is the transforming one. As you can see, it turns into a... Uh, when, it fl when, when you jump, it turns into a helicopter. And this move is actually really annoying. You can hit down to opponents with it too, though you gotta get you gotta time it right. Got a lot of range attacks. I'm doing the wrong motion. There we go. Gotta grab. Got that sword attack, which is pretty useful. Ooh, I wonder if this one's super is like a hyper beam. Uh, I think it may out. be, actually, yes. And I'm going to do this, because I don't want to be around for that. Nope, it's nope just a there's a charging charge. attack. The, the guy I'm using is fun, because his is an auto combo. Oof. But it... Uh, It'll sometimes, like, you know, you'll hit with the first hit, and you'll knock your opponent out of the way, and he'll just keep doing the auto combo to thin air. Nice. It's like, oh, no. Yeah, see if I can, uh... oh, I hit it. So sometimes that first hit, like, that first hit is, like, pretty easy to catch guys with, but if they're in the air sometimes, it'll just, they'll get knocked in a way that they end up behind you when you're sitting there punching in the air. Fun. It's like, oh god, oh no. Hmm. Alright, who we got left here? Mm. I mean, there are a ton of robots in this game. It's at least four. At least. Ah, why not? I just love that her name is Devilot to Death Satan. Uh, and you're playing your cannon robot, that's fine. 
you know what? I want to try this guy at least once. Because I actually know his moves. Uh, I haven't gone to Colonial Satellite yet. You know what I think is funny? You haven't played Super Smash Bros. Ultimate yet, have you? No. If you play as uh, Street Fighter characters, you can actually use some Street Fighter combos. Yes. Yes, you can actually uh, you can use the commands, I believe. Yeah, like the actual combos. I forget if they make a difference in damage, like if it does more damage, do it manually or what have you. Yeah, the fireballs are different colors. Mm. All right. There we go, yeah. About what I expected. Unfortunately, I don't have the moves handy, so I can't, uh, I can't see, uh... Oh, I thought you knew the moves. I can't see what, uh, how they do the Raging Demon in this one, since it doesn't have, like, a standard Street Fighter layout, you know? No, because I don't know what that means. Like, it's not the six, uh, the three punches and three kicks. Okay. So, in your average Street Fighter game, to do the Raging Demon attack, you do like light punch, light punch, toward light kick, hard kick. But Cyberbots doesn't have all of those buttons. Okay. So I don't know what I would do to do that attack. Oh. Phase two, proceed. That's what I'm saying. And I do have the air fireball. Yeah, no ground throw? Okay. Oops. Oh, yeah, that worked out. Oh, I was afraid that was what it was. It's like, oh, it's not going to be a super fireball. It's going to be uh, the uppercuts, and I'm, I'm much too far away. Much like I was there. Oh, looks like they can hit down. That's nice. Ooh. nice, good throw. Yeah, my weapons worked. That would have destroyed you, but for some reason, my weapons weren't fire. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the conditions for hers are. Like uh, with the Hellion, doesn't seem. I was uh, playing in an arcade mode. And doesn't seem to have a weapon attack on the ground. It only uses the weapons in the air. Um. So I don't know what the, what the situation with her is, or rather with uh, with uh, the robot you were using. Uh, you want to do one more match? Sure. I'll pick Shade the Changing Man. Which is a joke based on the fact that uh, I want to use this guy with a gigantic fist. That should be fun. Based on that being the name of the comic book character. And now I've explained the joke and it isn't funny anymore. Uh, Megalopolis? I, I, want you, I think you were there. That was the city stage. I'm going to do the machine arena, I think. I don't think we've seen that one. I think that was uh, the last match you had was in the Megalopolis stage in the arcade oh. mode. If I'm remembering correctly. But actually, it's funny that I picked this combination because uh, you know, I played through Shade's uh, arcade mode to unlock his robot. And uh, the last character you fight is uh, Gene in this robot. Hmm. Yeah, nice. He's got some good throws here. And whoa, I've got a dashing punch. That's surprising. I have a dashing chainsaw. Oh. All right, so I've got this move. That's neat. I remember this being super annoying when the computer did it. Especially because it can hit you while you're down. Mm. Which, of course, only certain moves can do. Oh, so. didn't know I could do that. Yeah, I think that that might uh, 
Keep, keep that in your back pocket, because that, uh, that might hit me while I'm down. Oh, rude. All right, got two throws in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, see, there you go. You got it. You hit me when they ran. I like that they actually animated... Uh, going over? Your character going over. That is a fun attention to detail. All right. Ooh. Uh, looks like you had a Some grab kind of attack. Grab. Yeah. I'm not sure what mine is going to be. I feel like it's going to be some kind of charging punch. <laughs> but we'll never know. The world may never know. Yes. Well, the world can probably like look it up on YouTube or something, but uh, we'll never know. Unless I can charge my meter. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that's what makes it super dangerous. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. I managed to avoid it. Hey, it worked out. You won. Good work. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, it didn't. It uh, it helped that I didn't know what <laughs> I was supposed to be. Now that I think of it, I've seen it before, but you know, because uh. the computer's done it. But you know, I just didn't remember. But there you go. Yeah, good work. You took that round. Ooh. It's a fair victory, sir. Because suddenly you were charging at me with a ball of energy, and I was like, um, yep. I'm going the other way. I'll move. There you go. Uh, it's a, a thing. decent Capcom fighter. I mean, uh, there's plenty of animation, you know, lots of attention to detail. Uh, I do like the, the variety of robots. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, three variations on each basic type, so there's technically a lot of characters in the game. Uh, they all play somewhat differently, though I think your moves will depend on what parts your robot has. Like, mm. robots on treads will have, will have certain moves in common and things like that. Giant octopi will have certain moves. Yeah, and of course you have, you have the boss characters, which are all totally unique. Uh, though, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's not the best Capcom fighter. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I like it okay, but... You know, I don't, I don't like it as much as, you know, like Street Fighter or Darkstalkers or name other Capcom fighting uh, franchise. But it's decent if you can get it for a decent price. I mean, I'm not sure how the PlayStation version compares. It's probably not as good. But well, I've heard it's, it's okay. if it's running on PS4, it's probably okay. <sighs> oh, she's saying it probably depletes that load time issue if there's a I load time guess, issue on the PS1. PlayStation 4 doesn't play PlayStation 4 1 games at all, so... Doesn't? Nope. You sure? Yes. Oh. Quite sure. Uh, yeah, for the digital one, you'd have to play it on either PlayStation 3, uh, the uh, PSP, or uh, Vita. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Vita because plays people PS1 games. Pop bought Vitas. Well, one or two people did. More than zero. Not by not by enough, but but more than zero. I don't want to I don't want to get on the Vita too much cuz as far as I can tell it's a decent system. Oh yeah, it just It's uh, not commercially successful, but it was a decent system. You really can't beat Nintendo's stranglehold on the market apparently. Yeah. And especially when you um Well, especially when Sony doesn't try very hard. No, they really don't. <laughs> Oh, you need to get external memory sticks for it. Only our memory sticks. Yeah, which we're going to charge through the nose for. Like, yeah, what were they thinking? I mean, they used proprietary sticks for the PSP too, but at least there were other things that used those. See that? So the prices weren't as bad. They think, oh, if we control all of it, we'll have all the money. No, people just won't want to deal with it. Yeah, it's like those memory sticks are only for the Vita, and they're really expensive. Ah. And now... At least Memory Stick 2 was, was like the, the Memory Stick Pro was in other Sony products. 
They made enough of them that they didn't cost a ridiculous amount. But Nintendo was smart and said, oh, you have an SD card? You have memory. Yeah, they just used SD cards. The Switch uses a micro SD card. Yeah. Literally. You yeah. just beep in yeah. the back. Done. I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. And also then they kind of seemed like they just kind of gave up right away and stopped promoting it. Oh, yeah. So, like, it was up to a bunch of small developers who were like, we're still making Vita games. Buy our games. Mm. And they tried, but, you know, you can only do so much when the company producing the system is like, yeah, we give up. Yep. Immediately. I don't know. Anyhow, back to Cyberbots. I mean, if you like giant robots, it's a giant robot fighting game. There's not a lot. There's not a ton of them. It's certainly better than Rise of the Robots, but uh, that's a really bad game, so that's not saying much. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, it's it's infamously bad. You're, I you're, thought you were gonna say we played it. No, no. Uh, fortunately, I know it's bad, so I don't own a copy. Oh. Yes, I'm not going to make you play that because uh, I'm have no desire to pay money for it. Ah. Uh-huh. So unless like somebody gives us a copy and we're like, ah, I guess I have to play this. I will not be subjecting you to that. Because I would also be subjecting myself to that. <laughs> and I don't want to play it either. No. But you know, this is, it's a Capcom fighter, so there's like a basic level of quality that you can, you can uh, be assured of. Unlike nowadays. Yeah. No, Capcom's still, Capcom's still decent. They're not Konami. Mm. They haven't given up on video games. They still make good video games. No, but they did put very excessive marketing in the new Street Fighter. Yeah, I guess, but you can... I wish they gave up more fight money, but, you know, you can theoretically unlock everything just by playing the game. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's easier to just buy it. Though in that case, honestly, like buying characters is normal. So it's not like they're charging more than you would to otherwise buy additional characters for your video game. See, what I find interesting And it had a decent-sized cast to start with, so it's not like, you know, you get, like, five characters and you have to buy everything else. Well, what I find interesting is you've had some of these new fighters of long-standing franchises mm-hmm. come out recently, and they'll be like, oh, now so-and-so's coming to the game, and it's like, they were in the other games. Why, why are people paying more money mm. for a character that you basically just cut out to sell back to them? Yeah, I don't feel like Capcom did that with Street Fighter. It's because... just sort of a general fighting game yeah. thing nowadays. Yeah. I like mean, even I see Dragon Ball Fighters adding characters, and I'm like, I feel like those should have been in there in the first place. Well, I mean, it needs more Goku. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> but even like... Um, a lot of the characters added to, like, uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 mm. were side characters. Yeah. Were side characters added in Super or in GT that, like, at least Super was, like, still kind of coming to yeah. the end of production. At least there you could say, like, well, when they made the game, that character hadn't come out yet. Yeah, or they had only just come out. Yeah, so but they then didn't know what to add. Even a bunch of them were given away free. Mm. And, like, I don't know, it just... I mean, at least it's not Dead or Alive, which had a $90 season pass that was like, you know, two or three characters and a whole bunch of costumes. Yeah. I, I mean, at least there, though, I mean, good for them. They're making money on putting out this ridiculous number of costumes. It's all cosmetic stuff. So if you just want to play the game, you don't have to buy hundreds of dollars worth of costumes. Yeah. Just remember when you actually unlocked things by playing a yeah. game? Yeah. Which, going back to Dead or Alive, they used to have a ton of costumes just in the game. Yeah. 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 But it's all because I can't get too mad about it because, again, it's all cosmetic stuff. You don't need any of it. It's not like it's all characters, you know. You're I know. Buying, you're buying two or three characters. That's not too bad. Yeah. It, has, it had a decent-sized cast to start with, and they had more people. And with Street Fighter V, I'm not mad at it because, like, they overhauled everybody they put in that game. So it's not like... Here's the same character from the last game, and now they're in Street Fighter V, and you have to pay extra for them. It's like, here's the character from the last game. We've dramatically overhauled them. I, it just feels like, you know, if the new Smash Bros. came out, and, like, Samus, Fox, 
Pikachu and Mario weren't in it, hmm. and then sold back to you as DLC. Yeah, that would be rough. I, I don't I don't feel like anybody's really doing that, but I don't know. Whatever. Anyhow, uh, we've completely gotten off of Cyberbots. I, <laughs> it's fighting robots. Yeah. I mean, if you like robots and you like fighting, this is a it's decent a game. Watch you Pacific can, Rim. You can get, I mean, you've got you know a system that will play PS1 classics. You can get it inexpensively that way. I, to, as far as I know, the PlayStation 1 version isn't bad. It's just probably just not as good as the Saturn version just because the Saturn was better equipped to play that kind of game. Yeah. I mean, the version we played probably wouldn't be quite as good if I didn't have a memory expansion. Because mm -hmm. if you had to play without that, then they wouldn't have been able to load all the animation and it probably would have been longer load times. Yep. So, <laughs> fortunately, I do have the action replay cart, which doubles as both the 1 meg and the 4 meg, so I can play any of those games. Woo! With a memory expansion, which is, you know, the best way, or in the case... The four megs completely necessary, or the game won't run, which is fun. But anyhow, uh, if you enjoyed us uh, giant robot battling, uh, make sure you give this episode a like. If you want to catch future episodes in which we may play other games featuring giant robots, actually, that's very likely. I'll make sure you subscribe to our channel. I've been Dan Mastroianni. You can catch me on Twitter at, at NewTypeCola. I'm Ian Butterfield. You can find me on Twitter at ENG Butterfield. You can find the show at RetroGameCNCT, Facebook.com forward slash RetroGameConnect, and RetroGameConnect.tumblr.com. Let us know what you thought of the games we played. Let us know if there are any games you'd like us to play. We can get our hands on them. We might just play them, or we might just crush them with giant robots. Mm. But most importantly, make sure you join us next time on Retro Game Connect. Chainsaw.